bless you guys. So, hey, yeah, Proverbs 13, 12. Listen to this. I love it. It's Proverbs 13, 12 is speaking. You know, it's that verse that says, hope deferred that makes the heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn things around. Or, you know, or it says desire realizes like a tree of life. Uh, you know, the interesting thing, when you're looking at this particular uh, passage of Scripture, uh, I want to just refer to what it actually says in the message. 2 a.m., bless you. <laughs> in the message translation, it says this. It says, unrelenting disappointment makes the heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn things around. A sudden good break can turn things around in your life. And you know, God wants to give his people a sudden good break. I really believe that. We see examples of this in the scripture. I've shared testimonies of this before. I was ministering somewhere actually on an island in the Caribbean one time, and there was a man there who owned a business. And I felt like the Lord said to me, I didn't know this. I felt like the Lord said, uh, his business isn't doing well. You know, he's even considering whether uh, he should uh, keep it going or should he shut his business down. And so I shared that with him. I just spoke it out. And he said, yeah, that's exactly true. And I said, well, let's pray that God will do something supernatural this week in sustaining your business and giving you a turnaround. And so we prayed. And the next night he came back to the place where I was ministering. And he was all excited. He said, man, you will never guess what happened. He said, God totally intervened today. He said, I made more money today in my business than I have in the past six months. So in a period of just less than 10 hours, literally he made more money than he had in the previous six months. He was just so encouraged, so stoked because of what God had done in intervening in his business. Now, so it ends up the next day, I see him again in the evening. He comes back to the place where I'm ministering and he begins to share with me. He said, today, he said, I made literally twice as much uh, money and then I did the day before. I did twice as much business than I did the day before. So guys, he literally, in the based on the past or the previous six months of business, that record, in two days, he had literally made more than what he had in 18 months, if you look at it that way. So they're just the Lord just supernaturally intervened and turned the situation around in his life. And there's a lot of promises in the scripture that say that God can restore to his people what has been lost, what has been stolen, or even what we did to give the enemy access to our lives to come in and steal, kill, and destroy. You know, sometimes the things that happen in our lives are based upon choices, poor choices that we've made, you know. And so we've all uh, squandered time, uh, resources. We've got reg regrets regarding decisions we made in the past that weren't good decisions. But regardless of that, the Bible still says that when we turn to God in faith and we trust in him, that he can turn any situation around in our lives and he can restore to us what the enemy has stolen, what was lost, what was plundered, what was robbed from us. It's, a, it's an incredible promise in scripture. Let me just give you a, a couple of um, references in the Bible that bear out this truth. The first one is found in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. God says, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. I love that. God says that it may seem that you're a prisoner right now, but you're a prisoner of hope. God knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. You're a prisoner of hope. And then he says this, even today, today, he says, I declare that I will restore double to you. So today I will restore double to you. Another translation says this very day, I'm declaring a double bonus. Everything you lost returned twice over. Hallelujah. What a promise from God that he says, no matter what it is, no matter what you've lost, God says, I'm going to restore it to you. Double for your trouble because you trust in me. You look to me and I'm the God of restoration. I'm the God that can restore to you no matter what the enemy has taken from you. Joel chapter 2 verse 25, the Lord says, I will restore to you the years the locust has eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. So he specifically states here that I'm going to restore to you years. Now think about that. 
How can God restore to us years? Can we go back in time? Obviously not. So how is it that we can experience the restoration of wasted years? Well, the first thing that we need to understand is that it's God who is the one responsible for this to occur in our lives. In other words, don't think that it has anything to do with you. God says, I will restore to you. Now, you know, when we've made poor choices in the past and we've done things that we regret, sometimes not intentionally, but you know, sometimes you maybe you made a, a poor investment, a poor decision in business and you've lost things, no matter what it is that you've gone through, God says, I still will promise you that I will restore to you what the enemy has stolen. Now, here's what I want you to understand about this promise, because there are some people that will look at this and they'll say, well, yeah, but that's not material or that's not physical. That's only spiritual. But my question is, who, do, who are we to say that it can't be material or it can't be physical? Of course, it's spiritual. Of course, God is concerned more importantly about our relationship with him than, you know, for example, prospering in life. But the fact of the matter is God loves us and, and wants to provide for us. He wants to heal us. The word salvation, if you really understand what it means, soteria, literally means to be free from the harassment of an enemy. That's what salvation means. And literally, Jesus came, according to Luke chapter 1, 74 and 75, he literally came to uh, rescue us from the hand of our enemies that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. That's what the scripture says. And the verb that comes from the noun soteria is sozo. And sozo can be translated um, to be healed. It can be translated to be delivered from demonic powers. It can be translated to have your mind restored. It can be translated to be restored or delivered from trouble, from oppression from um, you know, a crisis situation. It's used in the Bible in a variety of ways. So it's not just like God says, well, I can do this, or I'm more concerned about the spiritual. No, he's concerned about everything. When the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be sozo, it literally is saying in any way that you call upon God, he's gonna deliver you. He's gonna save you. He's gonna set you free. And so God died, Jesus died for us so that we can experience, like John G. Lake said, um, the grace of God, which is literally the triune gospel, spirit, soul, and body. He loves us and he died for every uh, area of our lives to experience his redemption. Hallelujah. So God says, I'm going to restore to you in every area of your life. If you trust me, I will restore to you. So how does God restore to us wasted years? Well, we've already alluded to Joel 2.25. That's where this promise comes from. And we have to look at it in its context. And when you look at two verses previous, verses 23, God says, I will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. In other words, he's saying this, there will happen a supernatural convergence. The former rain, which be, would be in Israel around October, the latter rain somewhere around April. God says, I will bring these two rains together and I will cause a supernatural convergence that will cause a supernatural restoration in your life. Just as in the natural, this could not happen. The latter and the former rain would not converge. God is saying in the spirit, I will do something that would not be able to happen in any other way than my intervention. And because God is spirit, he's not confined to space or time. So God is not restricted by space or time. Even though he made the laws of nature, he is not subject to those laws that he made. He is the creator and not part of creation. And so because God is literally a spirit, he is eternal, and there is for him, there's no such thing as beginning nor end. For him, time is really irrelevant. So God is saying, I can restore to you the years that have been wasted. And so, you know, we look at scriptures that 
uh, speak very clearly of this, like Psalm 90, verse 4, um, 2 Peter 3, 8. God says, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. He's not confined by any of these things whatsoever. I love Leviticus chapter 25, okay? Hang on to your seats for a moment, guys. This is what God says he can do in our lives. Leviticus 25, verses 20 through 22, literally speaks of the year of the Shemitah. And the Shemitah is the seventh year, and every seventh year, God would literally call, he calls the nation of Israel to not harvest, to not plant, to not sow, or not to reap the harvest, not to gather in any produce. So they'll allow the land to rest. And of course, the question that the people, when they first heard Moses declare that God was saying, I'm calling for us every seven years to be a Sabbath year where you don't farm, then the people were going to say, well, so what are we going to eat in the seventh year? Invariably, that question would come up. Since we can't sow, since we can't, um, you know, gather in produce. So this is what the Lord says. Now listen to this. He says, I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. So the father says, listen, did you hear that? He said, I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. So it doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural. God says, all I need to do is command my blessing upon your life, and literally my blessing will overtake even the very laws of nature. I will restore to you years. I will restore to you based on my supernatural provision and who I am, not who you are, not what you know people would say, not what the, the natural uh, would determine, because God is not confined nor constrained by any of these things at all. It's an amazing thing. You know, God is eternal, but yet he says, I'm with you, I'm near you, I understand everything you think, I know every moment uh, of your life, you know, the hairs of your head are numbered. He's transcendent, he is greater and more vast than the entire universe, but yet he's eminent, literally he lives within us, you know, God is literally the one who can do all things at all times, there's absolutely nothing that can stop him. So listen, before there is anything known as time, God who lives in eternity created what we call time and he placed you and me in a span of time and he gave us a lifetime and in the fullness of time he sent his son at just the right time and the Bible says that one day his son is coming back even though no man knows the day or the hour we don't know the time and he's going to extract us or take us back out of time so that we're going to live with him for eternity. So all the Lord needs to do is command a blessing on our lives when we trust him and things can turn around suddenly. Again, going back to Proverbs 13, 12 in the message, unrelenting disappointment makes the, our, our hearts sick, but a sudden good break can turn our life around. A sudden good break is what we need. We need God to intervene. We need him to command the blessing. We need him to step in and turn things. He says, I will literally restore to you. I will restore to you even the years that were wasted. So think about this. God says, if you wasted 20 years, let's say, okay, you wasted 20 years of your life. God says, no matter what you wasted, I will restore to you what you wasted. So he's saying, I will take the remaining years of your life, how many or how few they may be, and I will pack them full with my blessing so that the remaining years of your life will be able to supernaturally contain all of the blessings that I had planned for you. So it will be like you never missed a thing. Isn't that amazing? So God says that. He says, listen, I'm gonna cause you to experience a sudden good break. Now, let me give you a little bit more revelation here. In John chapter 10, verse 10, we're told that the job of the thief is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. 
Now the word that is translated more abundantly means all over, round about, and through. It literally has the idea of piercing as well. And it's translated in Mark chapter 6, verse 51, in some translations, beyond measure. If you look it up, the disciples were marveled or they were astonished beyond measure. So God is saying this. He said, the life that I'm called to, that I'm giving you, the life that is yours in Christ Jesus is a life beyond measure. It is a life of no limitations. It can't be measured. It is a life that cannot be confined to anything in the natural. So no matter what has happened, God says, no matter if you wasted your years, no matter if the enemy uh, came and attacked you and stole from you the blessings of God and the things that are yours, God says, if you turn to me in faith, if you trust me, if you will rest in me, I will cause you to experience supernatural restoration, something that will literally turn around in your life. And like the stories of the four lepers that we read about in Second Kings, you know, they're in famine. Things are very difficult. Uh, it's very distressing times. And God, through the prophet, says, by this time tomorrow, you will go from famine to feasting. And the only reason why that happened, it didn't have anything to do with people investing in the economy. It didn't have to do with uh, anything with, you know, them devising a more... Um, a powerful or more effective military plan to get rid of the enemy. No, 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 nothing at all. Read the scripture. The only reason why God says by this time tomorrow, you'll be feasting when in today you're in famine and you don't even know how you're going to live. God says is because I'm going to command the blessing because I say so. And when I say so, it will come to pass. And no matter what people say, no matter what doors seem closed, no matter what you even think, God says, I will turn it around. He said, I can restore to you the wasted years. I can give you that sudden good break that can turn your life around because I've come to give you life, life more abundantly or life beyond measure. Something that cannot be contained in the natural. It's something supernatural. So God's saying in him, in reality, guys, there's no such thing as wasted years, you know, because he's saying, even though you might have wasted things in the natural, God's saying, I'll restore it to you. And when I restore it to you, it'll be like you haven't missed a step, like, you know, you haven't missed a beat. He said, everything that was lost will be given back to you. Go back, as I read er earlier in this broadcast in Zechariah 9, 12, God says, I'm going to give you double. I'm going to restore. In the next broadcast, I'm going to talk about how David recovered all. God wants us to recover all. And I'm going to show you the three steps that David took to experience a full recovery of what the enemy stole in his life. Thank you guys for watching this broadcast. I'm Glenn Blakeney. Um, check out my website if you would, awakenations.org. Please sign up for our emails, your, my email teachings. And uh, go ahead and share this broadcast. If you enjoyed it, you know someone that you feel would be benefited from this, please share it on your Facebook page. Thank you guys. God bless you. Bye-bye. And happy Resurrection Weekend. Bye-bye.